Hey! Make sure to point out I've got a, a red irritated eye again, because people like to point that out. Stuff like that. I notice something different. What happened to your eye? For a year or two, I'll get like a dry, irritated eye like that. How you doing? Man, it's nasty outside. I can't stand the wintertime. It's okay. It was snowing like crazy last night. You know, listen to classical music, do some deep studying. And uh, that's, that part of winter is nice. You know, you open up the door and the snow flurries and nothing sticks. But uh, we're going to talk about... Um, the name of God. I'm not actually interested uh, in, even if you are, obviously so, in uh, beliefs and uh, religions. I'm only interested in metaphysics. Religion is secularized metaphysics, but I actually wanted to get into something I've not heard anybody uh, discuss before. It's really not so on YouTube. It might exist out there somewhere. You know, there's countless millions of videos, obviously, so. The origins, uh, origins, hello, did I say origins? I'll edit that out, of uh, Yahweh, uh, yod he wah -he. Um, I don't uh, pretend to know Hebrew, I know uh, Greek, and Latin's pretty darn rusty. I know Pali really well, and Sanskrit, and Russian, and Kazakh, and English. And, um, but this gets to the heart of things, and this is extremely ancient, and... Uh, a lot of the uh, Hebrew characters actually came from ancient Egypt. I like to talk about uh, the name of God and what it actually means is uh, the spiritus sanctum or the animating principle. Whether you agree or disagree, maybe you could actually listen with an open mind and actually approach things from maybe a different angle than you had thought, thought of uh, before. First uh, biblical usage of the name Yahweh is Exodus uh, 3, uh, chapter 3, 13 through 15 talks about uh, Yahweh has been chosen to remember throughout all generations. And I know people would actually want to discuss, and it's Elohim, but I think there's some debate on whether Yahweh is a plural or whether it's singular. Getting the actual meaning of Yahweh. Um, and I know uh, devout followers of the religion will not even say the word. They consider it... Uh, to be a type of uh, blasphemy to actually say that. They would actually use, and I forget the Greek word for Lord, I mean, excuse me, not the Greek word, but the Hebrew word uh, for Lord rather than evoke the uh, sacred uh, name. Uh, Yad, He, Wah, He, four characters in Hebrew. Yad, of course, is a ten, red uh, from right to left. I know that's the tetragrammaton. I know about all that, red from right to left. Yod is representation for ten, He for five, Wa for six, and of course, once again, He. Um, well, I'll refer to uh, Psalm 156, uh, which is, uh, Let everything that hath breath praiseth uh, the Lord. So, Yod, He, Wa, He, uh, it's a declaration, I think, in the Torah, that the first uh, thing on the lips of uh, any uh, being to be born is the name of the Lord, and uh, also, too, the uh, last thing on the lips of uh, any being is also, too, the name of the, the Lord. What this is actually in reference to is the animating spirit. We actually have, amazingly enough, from ancient Hebrew, ancient Egyptian, uh, ancient Pali, which I read and translate. It's been a dead language now for over 2,000 years. Sanskrit, and also, too, the same root in English, we have the same reference to the animating spirit, not literal air, uh, but the uh, breath of life, the actual metaphysics of uh, that which gives animation to anything. Without breath, of course, something is dead. Um, I'll point out to you a fact, you could agree or disagree, but it is the case that this is true, uh, that the uh, Yadhe. Let me just actually loudly exaggerate breathing in or the first breath of uh, an infant child. Way, the in breath and the out breath. It's a reference to the animating breath of life. Um, let me try that a little bit better. In breath, out breath, and of course the division between both. And this actually. And Elohim, I know, is plural. Yahweh, there's a debate on whether that's plural or not. I don't pretend to know ancient Hebrew, but uh, Yahweh 
literally is uh, the breath of life. This is the same reference in ancient Egyptian. This is the same reference in ancient Pali. Um, in ancient Egyptian, the term is uh, the Aten. I'm pretty sure you've heard of By the way, the five most important characters in ancient Egyptian are the same five characters um, found in ancient Pali, the most important words like Chet and Aten. Aten, of course, you know, is the sun disk, the individuation of the sun disk, of course, is the personal spirit or Aten or soul, the spirit to sanctum, or in the Sanskrit, the term is uh, Atman. I did a lot of translations, actually thousands of translation and decades of work of ancient Pali translation. I had to get into uh, the animating principle of uh, found within the Anapanasutta. Uh, it's called the Anapanasati, Majimina Kaya 3.82 here in a second, and actually bring everything a full circle here. Um, but between the first breath and the last uh, breath, of course, is life excesses. This could be the Hebrew character Wa, which is six. Every ancient form of, uh, of uh, Gematria, and including the Tetragrammaton, in reference to uh, Wa, of yod he uh, six is always excess. This is also, to uh, the meaning... Some uh, numbers, big numbers, like two-letter numbers and three-letter numbers, I've talked about this before years ago, are actually a word. So in staying, instead of saying like 1,256, you would say a word where the characters actually add up to you know, that number. Two-digit two, two digit numbers, three-digit numbers, and four-digit numbers. Um, the actual word, uh, and it's the same in English as it is in Latin as it is in Greek, nearly the same, sounds almost identical is uh, excess. Every form of ancient metaphysics says that evil is excess and excess is evil. Um, uh, King Solomon had 666 talents of gold and it uh, doesn't say the number of evil but evil is excess. The number of man is excess but it it doesn't say that that's a number. What it is is uh, in ancient Greek it is excusius and in Latin it is excessius. In Latin and English it is nearly the same which is excess. Evil is excess, and uh, excess um, is evil. Anyway, between the first breath and the last breath, uh, life is excess because it's a consubstantiality of spirit, and it's only held together, obviously so, for so long. And uh, it sits uh, between the two halves of God, which in either side of uh, a yod he wah -he, essentially, because Yod is completion, or ten. Ten isn't a number, by the way, in... Uh, it is a number, but it's not a number in ancient Egyptian. It's not a number in ancient Pali. And uh, like uh, the theology of arithmetic uh, by Amblichus and who knows before that, it's actually completion. One wasn't a number either in Greek. It was actually principle. Uh, the second was, of course, attribute. Nine was the maximum uh, number between one and ten. And ten was actually completion. Ten was a return uh, to one. So if one would be the point of the circle where the actual circle meets itself again, completion, which of course one is representative of God, but also two. So was ten, but ten wasn't the number of man. Nine is the number of man. But anyway, that's actually getting into the tetragrammaton of yad he wah -he. But Yahweh literally means the animating breath of life. The first thing uh, before any child learns a word, obviously just as it's born, is it makes a declaration of God and the last thing on your lips. And this, of course, is the Alpha and the Omega, the animating principle that, of course, keeps life together. Water, of course, is the third thing that binds the two, but matter and spirit, and, of course, the animating principle. When you actually breathe in and breathe out, you're actually making a declaration of, uh, of the Almighty from uh, the principle of what is uh, the name of God. The name of God is the in-breath and the out-breath, the animating principle that keeps you alive. We have the same thing in English, except as a root, like atmosphere, atmospheric. That root, of course, is atmo, no different than Sanskrit meaning not literal air, but the pneumatic principle of life. And people, unfortunately, have taken this literally, and a lot of people do, so-called breath meditation. I've been speaking about this for decades now, that there's no such thing as breath meditation in sutta, in the Deganikeya, Majimanikeya, Gotaranikeya, Kudakunikeya, Samyuranikeya. There's not. People say, well, I need to do it, I feel calmer. Now what you're doing engaging in a ritual or a practice, it is about being antecedent to the breath. We're talking about seeking the Godhead. 
or the absolute. What people believe in, in particular re religions, I'm not interested in debating and I'm not actually interested in at all. I'm only interested in the fundamental metaphysics behind all of this, meaning that the word Yahweh or yod heh is a reference to the in-breath and the out-breath of the animating spirit, the sanctum, that gives anything life, the breath of life. I mean, the breath of life, of course, is literally found in Genesis uh, several times. No, I think it's two times. Correct me if I'm wrong in that. I know it occurs one time early in Genesis. Um, but these, of course, are uh, the first and last words of any living creature, specifically in reference to humans, meaning making the declaration of the name of God. It's kind of hard to exaggerate as I'm literally exaggerating breathing. Are you listening? I, hope, I think it's coming across through the micro, microphone, okay? And don't over-exaggerate like a mouth breather because I'm not a mouth breather. <laughs> but I'm trying to do it on purpose. That's the first declaration of a living child is to say the name of God. Both the in-breath and the out-breath. That would be your last breath, the in-breath, which of course is life. The last breath that you breathe out would, of course, be the omega, so the alpha and the omega. And it's also, too, the first thing someone does when they're born, and it's the last thing they do before the spirit parts the body. But there's no spirit in the body, as I've spoken about endlessly. It's coordinate to the body, but that's a matter for another discussion. But this is the animating principle, literally the in-breath and out-breath, and uh, the unity of both. The in-breath and the out-breath would be no different than the principle and the attribute. Everything, by the way, in nature is completely mirrored from top to bottom. Um, the dielectric and the magnetic would be no different than talking about the in-breath and out-breath, which are not two different things, rather one thing. Light and illumination. The good in principle and the good in attribute. That which is divine and that which the divine is, and of course is, is, you know, is extremely inexacting. There are words in Pali and Sanskrit, uh, um, for uh, this, but unfortunately not in English. I go on to uh, Dignity 2.157. This is pre-sectarian, by the way. You know, the term Buddhism didn't exist until the 16th century. Those yellow robe guys running around Southeast Asia, those are not original to Buddhism at all. That's like thinking Catholicism is original to Jesus, which of course is completely ridiculous. 99% of everything relative to the Catholic Church is completely unoriginal. Not 99%, but a lot. You know, the uh, iconography, you know, all the ridiculousness of same is uh, unconnected to the original article. I'm only interested in the original article, by the way. No longer with, this is the declaration made of the absolute, someone who's obtained to the absolute Godhead or the transcendent principle. No longer with, in breath or out breath, so he who is steadfast in uh, spirit, uh, suvi muta chatasa, inherently quelled from all desires, because desire is a perturbation. The quelling of desires, of course, is the perfection of wisdom, and uh, the cessation of the imperpetuity of life, not only through this life, but through the next. The mighty sage has passed beyond. Um, with the spirit, or nous, or chitta, is the Pali term, limitless, he no longer bears sensations. Uh, perfectly illuminated and unbound, which is what the word uh, nibbana means. Nibbana is a Pali word for the Sanskrit term nirvana. They're both the same term, different uh, languages. His spirit, or nus, or chitta, is uh, definitely ahu vimuta. Ahu vimuta means uh, absolutely liberated or fully liberated. This is taintlessness, uh, anasava. In other words, there's no longer taints of uh, false identification such that the spirit or nous has, uh, has uh, been thoroughly uh, quenched, quenched from desire. This is uh, Paranabhamma. Um, there's no such thing. There's millions and millions of people across the world, and it does have benefits. I mean, just as like saying if your doctor prescribed you a relaxer for your muscles, it's like, man, I feel so much better. I'm laid back and everything's cool. And people will talk about the benefits of so-called breath meditation. Meditation comes from the word melite, which means a practice or ritual. People need to be doing meneme. 
Every time the breath is mentioned, it is a reference to the animating principle, which of course is the core of focus. This ideation of breath meditation does not exist. People, countless thousands of people have been debating it for decades. They say, well, I feel so much better when I do it. It's like, well, yes, you do, but there's a million things that you could do to do that. You know, these are practices or rituals. This is not about gaining wisdom or, or liberation, uh, proximity, self-proximity, or uh, to that which you inherently are, antecedent to the phenomena. The phenomena, of course, is the modulation. To say modulation is no different than um, talking about uh, Isn't the in-breath and the out-breath a modulation uh, which uh, brings about uh, the continuation for however long it exists of life? Isn't in-breath and out-breath a modulation of your lungs? The metaphysics of same is the modulation of life. Yahweh being both the in-breath and the out-breath, i.e. the name of God, yod heh wah -he, is both and neither. It is the inverse of the modulation itself, the transverse frequency which the absolute sits at, uh, as there's an old saying, uh, neither twix nor tween, in other words, it's neither here nor there, it's in the middle. And this, of course, is where we get the idea of uh, 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 majima, the path of the middle. It doesn't mean the middle path, it means the path between antinomies. Antinomies, of course, are of modulation. In Jima Nikaya 3.82, the most important passage, um, actually, as far as the methodology, which, of course, is theurgy, which is anamnesis, which is smriti, which is what the Greeks called meneme, Recollection is Platonic recollection, and it's not specifically Platonic, it's much more ancient than that. It is literally called the Anapanasati Sutta. This is a combination of uh, two prefixuals, an, which means prior to, apanna is a reference to breath or intake, but not literal breath, but the animating principle. Sati means recollection, it means meneme, Platonic recollection. It's not a practice or a ritual, it is literally theurgy, because Objective negation leads to subjective synthesis. So this literally means, and to a pedestrian who's not familiar with metaphysics, when I actually say what anapanasati means, it might perplex you, but it's not perplexing at all. It means recollection or anamnesis of the before breath. Seeing that which you are before uh, either antinomy of existence, the end breath, you know, everybody is a breath away, as they say, from death. And someone might be, uh, say, if they're stillborn, for example, and you give CPR to something, it's a half a, a, half a breath uh, away from life. And once they start breathing, it's like, okay, they're alive. But what sits between the in-breath and the out-breath, the modulation, which, of course, is that which sustains life? Because this is the name of God. Um, the mace, which is the Hebrew character wa, which sits between uh, he, you know, yad he wa he, or uh, he wa he. Uh, hey, why, hey, you know, the midpoint, the, the, mid, the midpoint between uh, the modulation of the in-breath or the out-breath, once again, Yahweh, that still point where no modulation is, that is the whole principle of what, in the correct translation, since I'm translating now for 24 plus years, ancient Pali, it is unfortunately, it's what happens when you give things to people that are intellectually deflated, they will read things literally and really profound metaphysical texts of sublime beauty which are telling you what to do. It's not a practice or a ritual, which is milite, which is where we get the word meditation. There's no term in ancient Pali that makes mention of uh, rituals relative to liberation or wisdom. It just doesn't exist. If a practice or a ritual could get you there, and by there I mean uh, transcendence, then you could take an unalive being, someone who's passed away, and hook them up to animatronic, uh, you know, string pulling like a puppet, and have it engage in rituals, and all of a sudden you could... I mean, if you follow that train of logic, if a practice or ritual led to liberation, then you could take a puppet and make it perform rituals, right? And then, of course, it would, well, that's completely preposterous, right? I mean, that's no different than saying you could take uh, someone who recently deceased and, you know, have a bunch of people move their arms and legs and have it bow 
and do all sorts of prostrations and um, external rituals, which is where do the word meditation comes from? It's a practice or ritual. That's what we went from the Greek word melite to the Greek word meditatio, which became the English word meditation. It's practice or ritual. Rituals and practices can calm you down, but they have nothing to do with either wisdom, transcendence, or liberation. I mean, that's not my opinion or feeling or belief. I mean, that's just an irreducible hardcore fact. It's not up for debate because it can't be debated. If you think a ritual or a practice led to liberation, then I could, you know, you see those little articulating puppets that you could get that the art teachers use. It's a little wooden puppet like this, and you know, you could bend its little arms and legs and stuff to help uh, people draw. Well, you could just bend that little wooden puppet and, like Pinocchio and do the right rituals enough times and, well, sure, liberation. That little piece of wood might, like, vanish into the ephemeral ether because it did all the right rituals. That's what people are saying. This is what happens when profane, unintelligent, metaphysically illiterate people translate this. So it means breath meditation. This is the sutta, uh, Sanskrit word of the sutra, um, of breath meditation. Anyway, this, all of this is exactly the same. Aten, Atman, Yahe Wahe, the animating breath of life, the pneumatic principle which makes life possible. So, well, that's life. It's like, well, what is life? Well, life is when someone's alive. It's like, well, that's a nice description. You just said life is when someone's alive versus what? Death is not the opposite of life. Death is the end of life. It's not the opposite. Anyway, the first thing a child says at birth and the last thing anybody says before they die is the name of God. <sighs> It's hard being, I'm not a mouth breather, so it's hard for me to do that, actually. <laughs> I don't have emphysema or anything. It is hard to imitate a mouth breather, but I do that to, of course, exaggerate, saying Yahweh. It's the animating breath of life. The Spiritus Sanctum. Not literal breath. By the way, I used to um, use the lack of logic and intelligence against these people. Say, well, you're focusing on your breath, right? That's right. It makes, calms me down. I said, that can't be any way connected to liberation or wisdom. It's totally impossible because if you're interested in focusing on breath, why don't you just focus on the flatulence coming out your backside when you eat a bowl of beans? I mean, one breath is the same as any other. You're focusing on gas passing in or out of your lips. Why not focus on the gas coming out your, uh, your tailpipe? By your logic, which is totally illogical and total lack of metaphysical understanding, you say that, you know, this is somehow connected to liberate. Of course, they deny a liberant anyway, especially if you're talking about a Buddhist. These uh, people are antithetical to what doctrine actually says, which, of course, the Atman of the soul is the entire light and refuge. It's a charioteer. And one, they don't even believe in a liberant. It's like you can't talk about liberation without a liberant. That's completely irrational and illogical. It's like, well... If you think that's somehow connected to liberation, which, of course, you deny a liberant, but that's a matter for another debate, which is easy to beat somebody on, then you, you can achieve liberation by focusing on flatulence, because it's just more gas passing out of the body. The in-breath or the out-breath out of your mouth is just gas. It's just a different variety out of your uh, tailpipe. And that always usually makes them freeze, kind of like a, you know... A broken record, they stop and think, well, you know, that makes sense, but I won't concede to it. It's like uh, people that have been uh, learning how to fight dragons for years in school, you know, paid a lot of money and spent a lot of time. It's like, you know, dragons don't exist. Oh, yeah, how dare you say that? I've been learning how to fight dragons for years. Well, you've been learning nonsense. You just wasted a lot of time doing something that wasn't actually conducive to what you thought it was. But that's a matter for another discussion. Um... All metaphysics gets uh, turned profane like this. It is not literal breath. I know I've said that many times in this video, but I keep saying it over and over and over and over and over to people, and people don't get it. It is not literal breath. It is the spiritus sanctum. It's the atan, it's the chit, it's the nous. Take your language, take your pick, and I'll tell you which word it is. It's not breath. It is the breath of life. We have the same thing. It goes from ancient Egyptian, ancient Hebrew, uh, ancient Pali, Sanskrit, same in English, the same root, Aten. 
Aten, 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 aten. Except with yad he wah he, it is the literal sound one makes when one breathes in and one breathes out. This is the modulation of life. Life is a modulation. It's a frequency. Not literal frequency, but essentially metaphysical frequency, of course. The antecedent of frequency is right here. You take the inverse of modulation and you would have God right here, which would be rest, wouldn't it? If anything is moving, undulating, whatever axis, multiple axes, wouldn't rest true energy, and rest would be just another fancy word for God, would it not? It would be right in the center, inverse to either modulation. This is what anapanasati means. It means antecedentness or platonic recollection. The Greek word is meneme. Antecede before the breath. What is before the modulation is right there. That would be yade wahe. That would be God. So the name of God means the rest point between the modulation of breath. That which, of course, gives breath its life. And, of course, life itself, of course, is the absolute, the transcendent one. Take your pick, God. I don't care what word people use. That is the rest point. It is not literal breath. It is the rest point which gives the breath its existence. And of course, breath is existence because saying existence is no different than saying life. I kind of hope I simplified this. The point being yad he wah -he, or Yahweh is the first word and the last word of any living being. Yahweh. The substrate non-Cartesian rest point, the nexus of all modalities, and of course modality means frequency, modulation, which we call breath, which of course is life. So this is the meaning of the word of God. Agree or disagree? Take your pick. I read every comment, but this is what the word means. Lux e veritas. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.